Hi, everybody. Hope you're doing well. My name is Victoria Pikowska, and I'm the founder of Victory Art. And today I would love to invite you and welcome you actually in our next session about how to target uh, and how to reach your uh, the right audience for you. I'm really glad that I'm back here. And uh, basically, before we discussed about how to build your brand, we discussed about uh, uh, things like uh, basically art market, state of art market. We discussed as well the advices for artists. We, we already had quite interesting topic, but I believe this one is the most important topic we're gonna be discussing so far. And I'm really excited that I have the chance to personally dis, uh, talk to you about this thing. So uh, definitely thank you so much for joining, uh, for joining us today. And let's jump directly into that. Yes. So first of all, it's extremely important to really realize who is your tar target audience and how to define the best target audience for you and how to promote your art. So the target audience uh, is, is good to define based on demographics and really think who can be interested in your products. So it can be based on age, it can be based on gender, it can be based on location, education, and even socioeconomic status. So uh, someone who is probably young person, I don't know, up to 25 years old, will highly unlikely purchase artwork, which costs, I don't know, 4,000 euros. Maybe the person will purchase artwork 100, 200 euros, 500 top, that could be but usually not uh, higher prices. So really think about your prices, your style, uh, as well audience you're already like have and people who are already interested in your art. And based on that really like sit down and discuss it. If you need to create this, there are many templates you can find online to, to think about these things. So, uh, learn about the market, learn about uh, the trends in the art market. Lately, it happened that in Asia, there is like a really uh, big wealth, especially uh, within generation Gen Z and millennials. So that might be your audience that you don't want to uh, target people in your country or in your, uh, let's say continent, but you really want to go uh, even further. So think about it because uh, if you do not know who you're targeting, then you're going to waste your energy and spend your precious time on the things you should not be. Um, so definitely think about your products and services, who they are benefiting. And based on that, um, think about like why it's, it's important for your audience to have actually your product uh, how you can advertise more efficiently uh, to help this audience to find you. Um, think about the tone of the content you're, you're putting out there. You can have amazing artworks, you can have amazing strategy, but if people do not trust you, then they will not purchase from you. So think about how you can truly build trust with your audience benefits of the target audience is that it will really help you to target the proper people and the people you really want to work with. Uh, well, if you're an artist, you probably know that criticism of a target audience is something what will always be there. Criticism always will be there. From certain perspective, it's good because it can really help you to grow as an artist, but at the same time, it's important that you really put a specific boundary there that you will be like, oh no, I, this is not something what I believe in. This is not something, this is not the value which I think I'm bringing in. So I want to actually uh, stop here, reflect on it and as well step, uh, step back and think about whether the criticism is valid or not. Because a lot of people can criticize, but not a lot of people can work hard enough and understand your perspective. 
So um, maybe if you get too much criticism from your audience, it can even mean that that's not your correct audience, that's not the target audience for you. So uh, even for these things, try to think about it and try to consider it. So how to identify your niche interest? Um, well, let's say that your audience is interested in, uh, drawings right so of course you're not going to be targeting someone who is only collecting paintings or you're not going to be talking to to a gallery which is only working with digital art right um so there are amazing templates all over internet where you can actually find sources how to define your right audience so that's maybe something what you can consider and have a look at um, if you do not have your audience and you don't actually know who's your audience and you're just like uh, pretty, uh, pretty like scared or you're pretty confused, like what am I even doing? Then it's the best thing to really show your art to as many people as possible and then build uh, on your career, build that, like take um, examples. Uh, how people are reacting to your art, what they are thinking, are they spreading word, are they positive, negative? So that's as well uh, good to do if you do not know who's your audience. Just keep testing. That might be uh, that might be good. So if you are as well focused on a specific medium or like a subject, as well consider that because, for example, I know people who are only uh, buying pop art. That, that's the only thing. They're not going to consider anything else, even if it would be amazing masterpiece and they would love it, but they would not buy it because it's not for them. So as well, uh, my personal advice would be uh, to enter conversations even on social media about particular subject or even consider uh, maybe joining a, spe a specific group uh, who is focused on only discussing about pop art or collecting pop art, like your niche. Think about it, that, that can help you a lot. And of course, this is connected with identifying your style. So once you know your style, it's gonna make it so much easier for you. And when we're discussing as well, what is style, um, a lot of people, especially when they're beginners, they think like, oh, I'm, I want to try everything. But that's not as well the best way to go if you're an artist and you really want to build a, car a career. Uh, when you define your style, think about the colors you want to use or you're using, what's your, for example, uh, brush stroke, right? Uh, what tools you're using, what's... Uh, uh, but what's your painting style? What's the medium you prefer? What's your size? Maybe that can be as well something you can differentiate yourself with that you're going to be creating only massive artworks or only minimal artworks. Um, as well, uh, if you're an artist and you're going to be in art business, uh, managing clients can be a very interesting thing for you. In many cases, it will go positive. However, in some cases, it will go as well negative. Uh, maybe someone will not be happy about what they receive. This can be quite tricky, especially with commissions. Or it can, some uh, people just like have different expectations, you know, sometimes even like pictures of slightly different than the reality. So uh, definitely, Start with the fact that not everybody even deserves to be your client and not everybody should be your client. So uh, the way how you're, let's say some people are thinking about their perfect partner, right? Think about your perfect client as well. So um, wh what do you want to see in that client? What's, wh why the specific person is a good fit? Um, it's much easier to, to actually suspect the right client when you already know who you're looking for. 
And there are as well some red flags you should be looking for. So for example, warning signs can be how much does it cost? Why it's that expensive? I'm not sure. Someone wanted it yesterday, but now they don't want it. They're like, um, they do not very much answer questions properly. They don't want to, they keep you know changing their minds. They don't want to pay you your rates. Uh, they maybe um, are having issues with the payments uh, or something like, I would always suggest artists to have a proper, uh, a proper contract. Always have a proper contract. If it's a small purchase, have a proper contract. If it's someone you know, do the contract because you're gonna protect yourself. And of course, like if it's a small piece, like I don't know, 500 euros, I still would suggest you to have the contract. So this can save you so much headache, literally. So the fact that you're being your own boss, um, does not necessarily mean that you have to be like uh, negative or like not polite to your clients, but uh, that gives you a lot of freedom to make your own decisions and to think who you want to work with. And I personally started um, started doing it recently and I'm saying more no, 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 even to people who want to work with us, either artists, partners, you know, if people uh, do not, very much act politely or if people are rude or not grateful you know then I don't want to work with them and this is like we ended multiple collaborations in the past uh, three months uh, and it's like increasing increasing because if we feel like uh, people do not see uh, the value we're providing or people do not value our work or people do not value work of our artists like we don't want to uh, collaborate with them so managing expectations is something that's gonna help you a lot, even more than contract. So you can control your clients, but you can manage their expectations and you have to kind of pre-prepare them and maybe train them. So uh, one tip, it's good to have everything in email. So even though like you had, I don't know, amazing conversation for two hours and someone says like, oh, I want this commission artwork and it should be this color and you write it down uh, or like you don't write it down, that can create confusion in the future because they can come back and tell you like, oh, no, I wanted it like in orange, not in blue, but you clearly remember that it was blue. Then it's kind of tough to, you know, argue with them and then you actually cannot win, you know, like, Seriously, you cannot win this fight. So definitely write down everything in um, written form and as well manage expectations. So for example, like how long uh, it's gonna take you, what's the realistic delivery time of a specific artwork? Uh, what are the costs which are connected with it? Maybe it's packaging, maybe it's delivery, uh, uh, delivery cost. It's very different, but really think about it. Uh, because that can save you a lot of time and it may seem kind of scary in the beginning to do that but it's so much better to do that it's so much so much better to really like let people know in advance what they can expect from you and what can really like um, what they can really you know get so Maybe uh, the way how you want to work is to that you can set aside one day a week or maybe even the morning to just work on your art and not discuss like this business things with your clients. That this is definitely something that would bring you a lot of value because it gives you as well freedom to not be constantly stressed about what you're working on uh, and about your clients, but you will get freedom to create. So definitely I would suggest you to consider it strongly. And there are several strategies to help manage your clients' um, expectations. So as I said, like put absolutely everything in writing because writing things in detail will help you in the future. Recap the key information, even 
verbally uh, while you're chit-chatting, you know, with someone like, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And the person starts to be interested, tell them like, these are my rates. Uh, these are usually sizes of an artwork, but it depends on this. This is the delivery time. This is the shipping cost. So always do that. Um, people have to receive information multiple times in order to really understand it and make sure that their expectations are realistic. Because sometimes people will tell you like, oh, but I need artwork like on Friday and it's Wednesday. Probably not going to very much work, right? So as well, do not hesitate to set a strong boundaries, like really strong boundaries that, that works amazing and saying no is fine. So you can, you can be, of course, flexible and you should be flexible, but within realistic limits. Um, amazing thing, especially when you're working on a commission, is to keep your client in the loop. So it means that uh, you keep sending pictures regularly, uh, that you keep uh, updating them. Okay, so this is the progress I did. People love it because if you are supposed to message or if you are supposed to deliver something in a month and then the client doesn't hear from you the whole month, that can as well create a negative uh, feelings. So even if it's like a small picture or small note, do that, do that. People really like it. So uh, once you uh, defined who you are, you're, you know yourself, you defined your targeted audience, uh, you already have a little bit of idea what you should do as well in the art market because that's what we discussed now there's the part uh which is about your own promotion well the thing is if you do not promote yourself you really cannot uh expect that people will know you people will not know you uh and in order to really people to know you have to do marketing getting out there can be challenging uh, that's something what I personally you know, started struggling in the past few months that uh, before my social media were completely full and uh, lively and I was posting every day and it was like, I was really open. But uh, now I do not do that and this is not good for me either. So I'm, I'm guilty myself by not uh, putting myself out there at this point. But once you really want to be successful, you just have to do it. People have to know about what you're working on. So start your marketing with an amazing online portfolio. There are a few things you can consider when putting content online. You can consider putting your best works. You can consider putting works in progress and how you work on things. And maybe you can even consider being more vulnerable and put old works uh, and comparing the progress you did. And so if you wanna if you wanna be online, you have to already know what kind of portfolio you want to share with people. Another very important thing is that you should have a portfolio online website where people can come and get to know you. Even if you do not uh, have a payment gate and people cannot purchase it on the website, it's fine. However, make sure that you even like do the most basic website, even if it takes you, I don't know, two hours or something, or you, it can completely minimal it. But just do that so people can actually Google your name and can be redirected somewhere, can be redirected to a place where they can see uh, where they can get to know you. Um, preparing strong about us is important as well. Uh, maybe you want to record a video for them. Maybe you want to show them your uh, older works, works you're doing now. So be playful about it. You can even use uh, many uh, website builders, uh, which uh, oh, what was a very popular one, uh, VIX is very popular, for example, Shop, you know, Shopify, but that one is like really focused on e-commerce. Uh, you have thousands of these uh, open source website builders. So 
think about it. And as well, uh, a while back, we discussed about branding. So make sure that you are maintaining consistent use of fonts, colors, and all brand assets. Uh, curate the content. Do not be that kind of person who just puts everything there. And when, when client comes to your website, they look, oh my God, I don't understand this person. I don't know what this person is doing. There are 10 different styles. I don't know if it's from one artist or from multiple curated. You can work on the things you want in your private life, but keep it for yourself and do not put it necessarily online. Think about what you want to show. Think about uh, your, uh, your art. Think about the collection you want to show, really. Because if you don't do that, people will not understand you because they will feel like you even don't understand yourself. Why, how they should understand you and trust you as an artist. Yes, coming back to about you page. Um, put there the highlights, maybe uh, your vision as an artist, maybe uh, seminars you attended, maybe awards you won, maybe uh, maybe if you stayed somewhere for a while and you were creating in a in a space, uh, maybe you got some funding. Talk about it. People love to see that, really. Uh, and you can start blogging as well. So it can be maybe a blog on your website. It can be maybe a short blog on YouTube. It can be short blog maybe on Instagram or TikTok, but once people will see your progress, then they will be much more willing to actually work with you because they will know, like, they, they will get to know you personally and they will really start trusting you. Uh, this is something what was mentioned already before, but I'm going to mention it again. Uh, sell your pieces online, really, because nowadays it seems that we're going into third lockdown. Uh, seems that everything is gonna close again uh, in many countries, uh, and people will not be able to see your art in gallery. And as well, seeing your art in a gallery is a very limited thing because there are maybe there are maybe fifty, maybe hundred people who will see, it, but online there are thousands of people who can see it, even millions of people who can see it. So put yourself online and find a trustworthy uh, gallery, online gallery, which can represent you. Because uh, if you're only, you know, just like on your website, that's nice, but if you have a trustworthy uh, gallery, which has a strong online presence and is representing you, that's the winning goal because you're gonna save so much cost, so many costs. You, you have even no clue, like for, for ads, for hosting, or maintaining the website, like uh, even online gallery has a really high cost. Um, and all of these things can be saved and can be done for you, even if you find the right people. And so um, enter art competitors to get an art promotion website. Well, uh, definitely, this is a good thing to do. So once you find some competition, um, I think that Vogue had art competition a while back and they were looking for very, very talented photographers. Maybe if you're a photographer, you can participate in that. Even uh, such a big agencies like Magnum, uh, they sometimes do that, that they just open their doors or their website uh, to a young audience, to new audience, to new talents, because they want to look for new people. So uh, if you find some competition, do that. Definitely do that, because then you're going to just like spread word about your art. And that's the most amazing thing you can do. And that's basically what you should be really doing. And offline promotion is now this quite complicated thing. It's like really. Uh, you cannot plan anything. We are trying to plan something, but it seems that uh, it's not going to be possible in the upcoming few months because of the whole pandemic situation. But if you have a possibility to do that, do that. Uh, maybe 
even if galleries will be closed or spaces will be closed, maybe you can agree with some shop that they can actually exhibit online, uh, sorry, uh, in their windows, your artworks. Maybe some hotel can exhibit in windows your artworks. So think outside of a box. You don't want to necessarily spend time to really push people in one space. You want people who is your target audience to pass naturally by. So think about this from this perspective. I was listening uh, to a very interesting podcast a while back, and they said that the cost of getting one person email nowadays is between six to eight euros. And it's only email. It's not even phone number. It's uh, not uh, more details. It's not even purchasing. It's not even trying to invite them somewhere to a specific place. So really uh, try to think about ways how you can naturally bring people to a place where you want them to be. Um, when you're gonna do that, think about what you want to show them. So not anything what you have in your studio, but really think about it. Like, what do I really want to show them? Is this good? Is that good? Yeah. So just uh, have a concept prepared already before. So next time we're going to be discussing social media strategies and the basic tips and tricks and how to uh, have the best storytelling on social media. And so guys, if you have any questions, you can ask in the chat or you can uh, always email us to curator at victoriaart.eu and our team will be there to help you and to support you on the journey. And definitely do not forget to sign up for our free consultancy sessions, which will be starting from next year onwards. You can as well contact our curator at the victoriaart.eu uh, uh, to sign up already now. And yeah, well, today I would love to tell you uh, that thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for Norway Funds to as well make it possible. And we're going to see each other uh, next week. Have a great day.